What up? What up? What up? What up? This is your boy, Newt1949. And this is episode four of Life of a Rookie DJ. And one of the most important things I would have to say about being a rookie DJ and getting out there and you're going to be spending money and spending time, effort, and energy is having that good support system. At my gig on Sunday, I had my girlfriend take a couple of pics. I put some stuff on Facebook and she popped up at my house today. What's today? Tuesday? Tuesday. And she surprised me with what you see before you. She has a little art app in her phone and she always messes around with stuff. Well, she emailed me this picture and then I was like, oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And she popped up today and bong, she blew it up. She framed it. She has my company there, Complete Vision Entertainment. And that's actually me right there, spinning on my new Mark IV track with my laptop. And um, the name of the event, it's my first real paid event. And that was one of the first dollars I ever earned from DJing. So I just wanted to start the video off like that and let you all know that if you are a friend, a family member, and you have someone, you know, trying to get out there, not necessarily DJing, but any business, go out and support them, man. This made my day, I'm not gonna lie. Having a tough work week, got some days off, so I'm happy, but that really made my day. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit, pause this video. I'm not sure how it's gonna transition, All right, but we'll see. I'm back. I decided not to transition because that was crazy with the dual screen, but I'm gonna dual screen into a transition again. All right, I just wanna go over what happened on Sunday, which was my first live gig. I did the pre-video. This is the post-video. Um, first of all, almost everything you could think would go wrong. Well, not almost everything. Couple things went wrong, didn't go my way, but I still got rave reviews. Everyone said I did very well, but me being the person that I am, I'm real with myself. And as a DJ, I know some of the do's and the don'ts and some of the tips and tricks that the average listener or party goer wouldn't know. So, you know what I'm saying? If I did mess up, they wouldn't really know, but I knew. Um, I said this in the last video too, so I feel kind of dumb, but we all do it. Double check your music. I bought a song from not not uh, iTunes or anything, but from a CD collection. And every other song on the CD was clean, except one. So when I played it, a curse word slipped. Nobody heard it. Um, nobody really caught it. I did, and I was like, wow, did I really just do that? So you gotta bounce back from that. You can't stop, you can't, you can't let it be known. You just gotta play it off and you know, apologize and say you're sorry, whatever. But that was just the first thing. But before, even before I get that, I was late. I was so mad that I was late because I had the address in advance. Put it in my GPS, but the thing is, I copied it and I pasted it, and I don't know how or why, but when I pasted it into my GPS, I pasted two addresses. So, when you look at it, you can only see one, but there's another one underneath it. So I'm looking at the one, and it's the right address, but it's actually going for guiding me towards the second one, which I couldn't see. So I was about five, 10 minutes late. Luckily, the event hadn't started and nobody was there. So when I got there, she was cool or whatever. And for me, proper DJ etiquette, if I'm late, then either I'm gonna play extra, which is what I did. Um, I, I played about a half hour extra. Or, you know, get your calculator out, do the math, because I don't feel like I should be paid for time that I wasn't there. And I hate, 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 hate being late. And that's another tip I was gonna say. If you can, you guys, when you have a mobile gig, or you know you have somewhere to be and you're not familiar because I was kind of familiar. I hadn't actually been there, but I was kind of familiar. I just didn't use my better judgment. Um, try a dry run, you know, if you have enough time. And that was another issue. Like this thing didn't really get solidly put together and I didn't even get the location till about Thursday or Friday. But get all that information in advance and if you can do a dry run, time yourself, then bang. You know how to get there, you know how long it takes, so you'll be better prepared on gig day. Excuse me, I'm marking these off on my note list. Yeah, um... Also, going with checking your music. I don't know. 
So all my tractor heads out there, if you're watching this, please inbox or message me. But I bought some music um, off iTunes, and it happened to be in MP4 format. And a couple of them were big pop songs that I wanted to play. Well, one or two I wanted to play early, and then a couple I wanted to play during the peak. Well, I get there, I get to the song, and what do you know? It didn't play. It said something's wrong with the file format, which was another issue. It was one of the songs that didn't go over when I was doing my mock session going through my music, which I'll do a better job of next time. I actually have Tractor analyzing all my tracks right now over here. Been running for two, three days. No, it's, it's running though. So, I will... Crap. Oh, my bad. That was me having a mini meltdown. Got track to analyze my track so it can store all the BPMs. And like in one of my last videos, I only have it plugged in with the power cord without the battery because I just want to leave my laptop on to do everything. And like an idiot, I'm trying to show you the screen and I unplug it. Yeah. 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 But luckily, it remembered what it was doing. So... Yeah, it picked up where it left off and it knows how many songs that's left to activate. That was a bad shutdown. Ugh. Told you, man. DJ, my reality show. Edit nothing out. I just paused the video. Boom. Back to what I was saying. Double check your GPS, do a dry run. Um, make sure you get to the event early. Don't do what I did. Uh, next event, I'm gonna give them a time and I'm gonna try to be there. 40 minutes, 30 minutes before that time so I can set up. Um, also, like I was saying, make sure you check the format of your song. Apparently, Tractor can't play MP4s. Wish I would have known that. Um, but I found a little workaround, and I'll tell you about that. But like I was saying also, make sure you do a good mock set. And right after that video, I did a lot of the songs, and I was adding songs and taking songs out and still listening to music and finalizing my playlist. So I didn't do a mock set like I should have, admittingly. And I do have a part-time job as well as a full-time job. So I was working, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And then I added some extra stuff at the last minute trying to get to the gig and do extra stuff I shouldn't have done that I won't do again. Um, when I have gigs from now on, I'm just gonna settle and say, remember that, hey, this is business. I gotta do this, one, two, three, four, five. And I mean, step by step by the numbers and maintain my professionalism. Luckily, the people was cool, you know what I'm saying? So, your boy didn't get <laughs> blacklisted or anything like that. Now, <sighs> on to the next topic. Receipt book. What? Yeah. Didn't own one. Didn't have one. Didn't think about one. Because, like I said, I just planned on doing that one family event. And then taking a the hiatus so I can learn what the heck I'm doing. So, I won't run into issues like not knowing I can't play anything for well, you know, after I booked the client, they are like, okay, um, can we, you know, do you take cash or check and can we have a receipt? Sure you can have a receipt. Ah! So I had to run to a little, I went to a drugstore, I forget which one it was, and I got a receipt book. I was like, you know what? I should have had one before this. So now I have a receipt book. So keep track of your transactions because again, as you run to different clients, you're gonna run to professional people who are going to want to receive so they can receive these things for their organizations or for their superiors or even for their own personal records because maybe they own a business or whatever like myself so there you go get a receipt book maintain the professionalism um focus during your set I had some huge, huge 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 distractions man um, I was actually set up <laughs> on a screened in porch because there's inclement weather. You know what I'm saying? They thought it was going to rain. I got about $2,000 worth of equipment or more. Absolutely not. I was like, uh, I'm not going to set up out there. But my speakers, shout out to Electro Voice, they really pump. You know what I'm saying? I was about maybe 30 feet, maybe 40 feet probably 50 feet away from the people. And my two Electric Voice 15s, um, for what my girlfriend said, because she was at the gig, she was like a couple people like, oh, you might have to even turn those down a little bit. 
Now they were outside. Like I was in the backyard, but all the houses surround a lake and there's just big open areas behind everyone's backyard. So it's not necessarily part of their fenced in backyard There's another area behind. So it was set up out there and my music was reaching that far and it was that loud. And I was surprised, but I was like, you know, cool. You know, they, they helped me gauge. Again, reasons why you show up early. I should have been the one to set up my speakers, put on the song, walk, up, walk over to the area and determine, okay, am I loud enough, am I good? But I have backup. That's another good tip too. If you can get someone you trust who's gonna actually be helpful and not hurtful to come with you on your gig, then do that. You know, and, and, and have a talk with that person, let them know what you need them to do, how you need them to do it, so things are run smoothly. Because you don't want anyone trying to come and, and shotgun and try to take things over or, you know, make you look bad. So you have to be careful with that as well. So yeah, try to focus. And I mean, like I said, I was on the screen in porch. They had a couple dogs. Dogs happened to love me. So they were like under my feet. And I'm trying to like mix songs and find the next track. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the dog wants to be pet. Then um, also, another good, uh, I got to refer to this guy again, DJ TLM TV on YouTube. Thank you so much. Now, this was a community event. So I had adults, I had some younger teens, some older teens, and children. I would say as far as the adolescents go, there's probably more kids than anything. You know, now when I say kids, I'm saying... I'll say 13 and below, or 12 and below, so it's 13 to teenagers. And I had people ask me for songs that just weren't appropriate, so I kind of looked at them, and I'm like, I can't play that. Like, you see these little kids going down this little water slide thing, and they want me to play songs like Anaconda and Fancy. I don't think there's anything wrong with those songs, but that's not necessarily, those aren't definitely Anaconda. It's not a song you want to play when there's kids around, it's not for the kids. So I handled the request well. And I did play a different song with Iggy Azalea and a different song with Nicki Minaj that could slide because, you know, they both have good verses and other songs that are kind of mellow and, and, you know, don't cross any lines. So I got away with that. So everyone was pretty appeased with what I did. So, and, th and that's what I mean when I say focus, man. You gotta know, okay, you gotta know when to say no, in my opinion. You got to know when to give someone that that slight little fade. Like, yeah, okay, I'll get to it. And then just don't do it. That might not be the best way. Or sometimes you just have to let them know like I did as well. Hey, you know, I don't think that's an appropriate song. Maybe if you book me for another gig with just you and your friends, we can work on that. But with these kids out here, I'm not going to do that. Because you have to remember, when you're DJing, you're DJing for an audience. And that, that's another thing that the people asking you to play certain songs don't think about. It's not about you who's asking me to play a song. You know, it's about me appeasing to the entire crowd and me letting me do my thing. You know, I'm the one with the equipment. I'm the one with the experience. I know how to spend, you know, enough to get people up and moving. So you got to trust me to do my job. And if it's a popular song, you should, you know, have more confidence in the DJ. You know, and say, you know what? He's probably going to play it. It's pretty big. It's a pretty hot song. But that's a whole nother subject. Like I said, double check DJ TLM TV. He has a video about how to handle requests. That's just how I handled it. Um, More practice. Definitely, I need more practice, man. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. I, uh, I had my speakers up too loud at one point And actually, for the first time, saw that limit light come on. And I booked around my DJ controller to go doo -doo 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 -doo, turn this sucker down because they are I think $400 each those 215s yeah don't need a blown speaker so I got it right um I turned the speakers down but I turned the master volume up on my DJ controller and for some reason it balances there's like six different volume control so I said to myself okay the le lesson learned you know I, I need to find a place maybe you know, a rec center or something, somebody I know, a hookup, so I can take my speakers, play my music, and, and really get used to whatever levels I want to play at. And, uh, yeah, that'll prevent me from blowing up 
or damage it. So yeah, you definitely want to take care of your equipment. So be careful with that. And again, that that's on me because again, I'm a rookie, man. That was only my that was my first real true gig. The other one was a family event. And again, that's why. I also said in my first video, you don't want to get out there too fast. I got out there too fast because it was kind of a favor for a friend, but I was going to get paid for it. I knew I had enough skill to make it through the event successfully, though I didn't do it as smooth as I'd like. I still left a good impression. So, but my overall recommendation, yeah, is not, don't gig too early, man. Don't. Like, seriously, I'm done until probably like... Maybe January, unless someone wants me to do, maybe I might do a Christmas party or something because that's, to me, that, that wouldn't be too tough. I have a lot of those Christmas CDs and songs and I think I could put together a good Christmas mix. But as far as like a, another big major event before then, nah. It's gonna be about practicing, learning more about my software, um, making sure music that I get that says it's clean is clean and working on things like mixing, beat matching, um, and just overall DJ etiquette and any tips and tricks. Um, also, your next subject, scheduling and calendar. I always make sure you have either a calendar app or an alert set in your phone for your gigs. Uh, I didn't need that because it was pretty fresh in my mind and I'm not very, excuse me, busy. But if you happen to get busy or anything like that, do yourself a favor, either write, write it down. If you have an iPad, put it in your iPad or Android or whatever. Put those appointments in there, you know, and give yourself time so that you won't have conflicts and time issues. And also, not, I can't think of another word, but pressure clients to let them know if they're unsure about details about the event, say, hey, you know, I need to know by this date and by this time. Because that, that was another issue I ran into. I was like, I had to work on the same day as the gig, but I didn't find that out until later because I didn't get the gig time in time. So when I did get it, I had to let my manager at work know, hey, I have to leave early. You know, I'm not gonna turn down this gig because I'll be making 10 times more of what I'm gonna make these next four hours here. So you don't wanna run into scheduling conflicts at all. Now, this next topic is a bit controversial. Um, I'm just going to tell you how I did it, and however you decide to do it is up to you, but pricing. I feel like you need to be reasonable and know what you bring to the table and understand who and what you're DJing for. I have a pricing table where I get booked at a minimum at a certain rate and basically I have a three hour rate and then anything above three hours is a is a flat rate. So I pretty much have three rates. Some people say it's a good idea. Some people say it's a bad idea. Um, some people's like, hey, just do one rate. But I feel like this for me. I feel like giving multiple rates because the, the longer you book me, the quote unquote cheaper you're getting me for per hour. You know, let's say, and this is hypothetical. These are not my numbers. Let's say I do a two hour minimum at $150 an hour. And I say, okay, well, if you book me for three hours, um, I'll do it at $100 an hour. So, or $125 an hour, basically. I wouldn't say 100 but say you bump it down 25 bucks so now they're probably going to be more prone depending on their event if they have the flexibility to probably give you that the extra time which is cool with you because this is what you do so now you're getting the extra time they're getting an overall discounted rate they're getting you for more time and you're getting paid a little more on top of it so those are things to think about you know, two hours, buck fifty, it's three hundred bucks. Three hours at one twenty-five, it's three seventy-five. So you gotta think about that. That that's how I, that's how mine is structured. It's structured to the more time you book me, the cheaper I'm gonna charge you per hour. 
Uh, like I said, I have a cutoff. After three hours, that's just the rate. You know, it, it's cheaper for you. I'm going to end up with more money in the end, but you're going to get more time at a reduced rate, if that makes sense. You know, and some people say it's confusing. Some people say it's too much. And again, things can always change. Your starting point, that's up to you. I'm not telling what mine is. Don't ask me. May I might inbox. If you inbox me, I'll tell you. But I also know what I what I bring to the table. And I feel like if you want, you know, some DJs charge for, hey, do you want lights? How many people are gonna be there? Do I need to bring one set of speakers or two? Those are things I would say talk to an older, more experienced DJ about. Because I personally don't know. And I'm not there yet anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me at this point. My rates are very reasonable. Um, I got no complaints. They're actually shocked. Now, I'm not bringing two thousand dollars worth. I'm gonna tell you this right now because this is this pisses off a lot of older DJs. I'm not one of those three hours for a hundred dollar guys. Absolutely not. No, that's not me. I'm not gonna have two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars worth of equipment hauling around in my car to get an accident. You know, something could get damaged or ruined for a hundred bucks for three hours. Absolutely not. You're gonna pay. You're paying because I'm providing you with the service that you need. I'm gonna provide you with quality service and this stuff is not free. You know what I'm saying? And this is this is part of my livelihood. So I, I charge a good rate. It's fair and it's affordable. Yeah, that, that's just all I'm gonna say about that. Now, one of the most important things I want to talk to you all about, give me one second while I switch over to dual video. Hello. All right, I'm back. Sorry if the lighting is a little awkward, but I wanted to put it in dual camera mode. As you can see here in front of me, this is one of the flyers that I had at my event. Um, like I said, I didn't plan on jumping out and gigging soon, but this was a good opportunity. It was something I knew I could handle. So hold on. Yeah, sorry. Doing 10,000 things at once. I'm actually rendering and uploading episode three as I record episode four. Your boy is busy. But like I said, I was going to go on a break after I did my family event. And this opportunity came to do this event. I know I could handle it because of my musical experience level and I had the music that they wanted so I had no business cards get business cards get something catchy nice design unique design if you can so you can have business cards to hand out what I did was I took my company logo complete vision entertainment logo by push graphics my boy Colin Myers I love that um, I like how he did the K with the letter V and they're exaggerated, they're connected to form an I. And you can see the iris in the middle. That's hot. Okay, it might not be called iris, but you're puke or something. So, I gave pertinent information. Complete Vision Entertainment, owner and DJ, Robert Wilson Jr., that's me, aka DJ Rob Will. For booking and pricing information, contact, bang. And underneath there, there's my phone number and a professional email address you don't want nothing you know cookie cutter djs cutthroats at gmail.com come on man unless that's just the crowd you're looking for all right so i had about i made about a hundred of these but i didn't take all of them to this gig i took some and again where your tag team partner comes in to play my girlfriend because i couldn't set up near everyone put some of those out people took them you know some people said it was a bad idea they're like oh well not the people at the event but some of my friends were like man nah like they're gonna end up as a coaster end up in a trash can i'd rather have something than nothing because i couldn't get business cards in two days so sorry about that like all right sorry about that i know it's probably darker but that light was getting on my nerves so i know it was getting on yours so it's better to have something than nothing. And then I thought of something very ingenious while I was at it. Let me scroll over. I don't want y'all to see my info. Do, do, do. You gotta learn how to play the guitar. Do, 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 do. Bang. So what I did also was this is a bigger flyer. 
and it's a full sheet of paper. Again, you have my company logo, you have my name, that logo, Push Graphics, Cola Myers, um, owner and DJ, Robert Wilson Jr., aka DJ Rob Will. For booking and pricing information, contact. And again, I have my phone number and I have the email address. I have about 10 of these. I got five of them laminated because when I go to gigs, what I'm gonna do is whatever table I'm using or there's a post or a pole near me, I'm gonna hang these puppies up. So people who may not, I might not be able to you know, bring someone with me or I may not have time to give out business cards or I may miss someone. These will be hanging up. They're big, they're easy to see, they're simple to read. There's not a whole lot of mumbo jumbo on there. I might spice it up or spruce it up later, but you're talking about something I threw together in about 30 minutes just for the sake of this event. Simplistic design, company name, my name, all the information that they needed. So that's what they got. And my girlfriend's calling me while I'm doing the video. Call you back, baby. So those are my tips for this episode, episode four, Life of Rookie DJ. Um, check your music, know your software, show up to the event on time, try to avoid distraction and focus. Advertise, advertise. Because And actually, now that I think about it, I got another gig because of this. It's not until April. This now being September 2014, it's in April 2015. I also have another gig in April, which goes back to scheduling. I have another gig in April. Funny, and they're like a week apart. So who knows? So remember, always advertise for yourself. Um, show your proper etiquette. Work on your pricing format. Don't cheat yourself. I'm a rookie, but guess what? I'm not doing two or three hours for 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Don't let people tell you that you should take those kind of rates either just because you're new to the game. You know, if you're new to the game, people get, you know, what they get. Don't go there and ruin anyone's party or their wedding or anything like that. But at the same time, if you work hard and you bust your behind to buy this equipment, don't play yourself like that. I feel like I should get paid for what I'm worth. And as I get better, I'm telling you now, my prices are going to go up. I'm reasonable now, and they'll still be reasonable. But for what I bring for the table, um, I feel like my pricing is good. But as I get better equipment, more equipment, and bring more of a presence as far as lights, and sound, and possibly staging, and you know as my expenses increase so do my prices but i will always make sure that my customers get what they should be getting each and every time so and that doesn't mean i'm going to start charging you know five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars an hour no that's a whole nother subject area club versus private and all that stuff so thank you for checking out my videos this one might be a little chopped up and looking crazy but i'm still working on it life of a rookie dj Thank you for all the support. Make sure you hit like button. Make sure you hit the like button, excuse me. Make sure you subscribe, man. I got more videos coming. I'm gonna try to do at least one video a week, like I said. Um, any questions, comments, anything y'all wanna share with me, hit me up in the comments, inbox me. Um, and also, if you check the information section underneath this video, you'll see links to my social media pages. Hit me up on there. Until then, all my DJs continue to share the knowledge and keep spinning. Peace.